We thought we'd begin with a few notes from the catalog uh, uh, by the director of the museum, Peter Sells, on what funk is. I arrived here in 1965 to see this particular kind of regional move, uh, uh, attitude, that's a much better word than movement, a regional attitude which, which we called funk, you know, which was uh, uh, really rejecting the whole art scene, the whole art world, which was making fun of, f fun of things, uh, which was, it was in a way the opposite of, uh, of pop. Because we are pop, you know, like uh, glory, glorified consumerism, Funk put it down. Funk put down the art world, put down for consumerism, and uh, enjoyed uh, the erotic quality of art and, and, fr and free life. And with that kind of a free spirit, it's a spirit with an attitude, and it was never a movement. And when we first did the Funk show, we really did it because we had fun doing it. We never, never expected that it would become uh, sort of part of art history. Nobody paid, was paying attention to what's going on in California. You know, there, was, there were no sales. Uh, these guys didn't, they had to make their living teaching and they started a wonderful uh, teaching department at Davis and uh, they had fun. They really created this marvelous environment with uh, TB9 and all that. Uh, which was really unique. It doesn't exist anymore, but it was unique. And uh, it was just, you know, this wonderful group of people. So there, it, there was really a situation here, this free-for-all situation. There were no, really no, no galleries where this work could be sold. There was no, no culture of criticism. The critics uh, didn't know what to do with it because they didn't, it didn't fit into any category. They didn't fit into anything they would write about. Using the term funk for this attitude originated in discussions I had at that time uh, with Harold Paris. And in a way, Harold Paris originated the term in an article that he wrote uh, for Art in America. When asked to define funk, artists generally answer, when you see it, you know it. It is largely a matter of attitude, and like many contemporary novels, films, and plays, funk art looks at things which traditionally were not meant to be looked at. Well, we have the catalog of the funk show, and uh, we had a very good designer, really original designer named Bruce Montgomery, who designed our catalog back then. It has a page here which has all these different uh, definitions of funk which we found. So that was nice. And um, uh, here the typewriter, Anderson gave that to the museum right after the show closed, uh, the typewriter. And that's Manuel Neri. You know, later after that, he went into totally figurative uh, sculpture um, made out of clay, uh, out, of, out of plaster and out of marble. But then he did funky things like this. Uh, uh, which is uh, just a uh, glazed, uh, glazed ceramic. This is Harold Paris, the sculptor. This is a quote from him, and I'm going to read the whole thing because it's worth reading. In Los Angeles, art is consumed voraciously, a bargain table commodity. In San Francisco, in the Bay Area, in this bay of lethargy and social inertia, the artist here is aware that no one really sees his work and no one really supports his work. So, in effect, he says, funk. I said here, funk has created a world where everything is possible, but nothing is probable. 